Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be trying to do something educational. We're trying to uh, kind of like quash a bit of a myth, um, kind of answer questions that I see popping up all the time. And it's something that generally happens, I see happening on the forums a fair bit. And I don't just mean, you know, other forums, I mean it happens on the OC3D forums as well. Um, you should go and have a look by the way. But anyway, and it, it concerns power supplies and how big does our power supply need to be. So what I've done is I've put together what I would consider, I wouldn't say it's kind of uh, a mid-range um, rig in the slightest. Um, and I'll tell you the specs that we've got. We've got uh, an overclocked i5 4670K, 4.4 gigahertz. We've got 2400 megahertz of Corsair Dominator um, Vengeance Pro RAM. 16 gigabyte of that. We've got an Asus um, ROG, ROG, whatever you want to call it, Maximus Gene motherboard, because it's MATX. We've got a solid state drive. We've got um, a Corsair GTX Neutron, 240 gigabyte solid state drive. We've got a one terabyte green um, storage drive. We've then got the Asus ROG front bay as well, because a lot of you like to add all your little accessories and stuff like that. A Corsair H100i is in there. Um, and so I would say that is kind of teetering on, moving up towards the higher end, because, you know, a 780 tie is a fairly meaty, um, you know, probably the fastest single core graphics card that's about at the moment. And uh, if you ask on forums, people always say, ooh, 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 do you know what I mean? You need a huge power supply for that. And people will be saying, oh, you need like 800 watts or maybe even 1,000 watts. Well, actually, I've got this rig now all plumbed into a Corsair RM450. Um, and there's probably a lot of you on there reaching for your mouse, reaching for your keyboard to start telling me that it's not going to work and it's gonna, you're not going to have enough power and it's not going to perform properly. Well, why don't we take a look? Okay, so I've turned the studio lights off. And what I've got is we've got a uh, watt meter here just that you plug into the electric. I've got the extension lead up here just so that I can plug this in and we can see it clearly. It's on zero at the moment because power supply is turned off. But you can see the rig. Direct CU um, 2 GTX 780 tie. You can see that we've got the MATX ROG in there. Um, Corsair memory, Corsair fans. It's a lovely rig. But a lot of people would say the odd thing out is that power supply. And it's something I see continuously. If you watch this little monitor here, when I turn the uh, power supply on, you'll see it just kind of it jumped up quickly there. And it will pull a little bit of wattage because all the little bits and bobs in the rig are now on. And we'll turn it on. And what I'll do is I'll... Uh, it's going to wear uh, because I've started it and stopped it a few times. But we can see down here, 80 watts, 85 watts, 89 watts, 92 watts. If you can't see the screen down here, then you can um, uh, put it in 1080p mode and blow it up full screen and you should be able to see it slightly more clearly. I've done the best I possibly can do with the lights and the cameras and stuff. But anyway, the rig has started. So we're all up and running there. Now... We can do things like loop games, we can loop Unigen, we can do all sorts. So I'm going to just do Unigen quickly, and I don't want to bore you with 20 minutes of me looping stuff. So we're literally going to do this all real quickly. But the thing is, I want to show you on the screen the wattage, and I'm trying to keep the video length down. So we've got Unigen running now, okay? So what we're going to do is we've got down there, and we can see that the, the monitor has changed. Now, yes, that is that when it says 356, 357, that's the watts that it's pulling from the wall. Uh, in, in certain parts of Unigen, as it goes through, it has I have seen it go up to on this rig about 390, so not a huge amount. But it will just loop, and those the wattage will change continuously as it runs through. But so. You know, not a huge amount there, but what we can do is if we go back up to the monitor quickly, what we'll do is we'll escape. Oh no, wrong one. I should know this the amount of times I have to use this program. What we're going to do is we're going to flick what I call the killer of graphics cards on. 
and this is an absolute beast. We're going to go on to OCCT. This is pretty much firm up, just for anyone that doesn't know. So we've got a zero idle period, zero minutes at the end, 30 minute run time. You can see we've got it all maxed out, 2560 by 1440, full screen. We've got the shader complexity maxed out, error check, giving it a little bit more memory, it won't use it. And the limit for frames per second is a 200, but it's never going to get there. So what we'll do is we just click that, and then that starts running. Now one thing I will say is this, for the graphics card, is like trying to pass the Marines test. It's an absolute killer, and I do mean an absolute killer. Both the temperatures and the watts pulled are significantly higher. Now I have seen that at around 4.30 with it absolutely tear ass maxed out. Um, and just to show you, for the first time today, the Corsair <laughs> power supply fan has started running. Um, because amazingly, with uh, this rig, with the door on, so that there's actually um, airflow from the front passing across, I've seen that not even start spinning for 10 minutes on this rig. So if you thought it was mad with a 1,000 watt in the power supply test, then this one will absolutely blow your mind. But there we go. So we've got it running firm up, which is the abs and it's doing error checking as well. So it is using the CPU as well to do the error checking. Um, currently, our CPU temps, they're not too bad, but absolutely ragged out. We're doing 420 watts. But again, I don't want to bore you too much. So what we're going to do is just quickly again. What I'm going to do is uh, finish this. And then uh, what we're going to do is put CPU limb pack on. This again is a killer. I can't use all logical cores because we're only on an i5, so it's not got hyper threading. We're going to turn this on. And then once this level here gets up to about 90, I'll then show you how much watts it's pulling. Oh, we we'll put it up there. So on CPU limb pack, uh, you can see the blue line going up here. Once that gets up to about 90, what I'll do is I'll show you the watts that it's pulling from the wall. And this is with the CPU absolutely maxed out. Bing, you can see all the temp spike. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll go down to the wattage thing. So that's pulling about 175 watts, 176 watts, there you go. And that's with the CPU absolutely, completely twatted, just absolutely maxed out. So it's quite a lot less than most people may think that their rigs may be pulling. So uh, what does this actually mean to us anyway? So let's just move on to a brief conclusion. Okay then peeps, so I'm trying to keep this video short because I'm renowned for making them about 50 minutes long when they could be 15 minutes long. So I'm, I'm, I'm per, I am trying, but anyway, point. You can see there that we've got this rig running completely fine on a 450 watt power supply. That 450 watt power supply was getting up near its rated limit, but it hadn't exceeded it. And I've tested this quite a bit over the weekend running different games. And to be fair, the stuff that I've shown you today, Unigen, the reason why I use it for temperature testing is because that's an average um, uh, game benchmark for most things. Uh, the Fermark is a complete and utter CPU devastation tool. But, and then by that I mean the temperatures just, if you think temperatures are high on some of the other benchmarks, then whoa. But anyway, so we use um, that because it just pulls in a, an immense amount of power. And Fermark is for, the, the, the testing that we've done was the, the best way for us to get any rig, especially this one, to pull the most from the wall. But as you saw, we only managed to get it pulling 430 watts. So when you see people telling you, oh, you've got a GTX 780 tie, that must mean that you need an 850 watt or 1000 watt power supply, you can kind of see that maybe possibly you don't. Now, not that I'm going to tell everybody out there to go and buy an RM450 for all of the, all of the rigs out there. What I was merely trying to show you by using such an extreme end of the range with this is that it coped perfectly fine. One of the good bits about these is they run really, really quiet and the semi-passive fan profiles are just insanely good. But the power supply itself 
is fully modular. It was perfectly capable of running this rig. It's ran games all over the weekend. I've actually had people come around that, you know, mates of mine that really like their gaming. And I've said, I've got a rig, I just need you to play games on it all the time. And they've come around and we've had beers and they've just beasted the living kahunas out of this. And it's not skipped a, a skip, you know, skipped a beat once because a lot of people kind of assume that this shouldn't be able to run it. But as you can see, it's perfectly capable. So why do we need all these big power supplies and why do we need, do people keep telling us? It's, it's a common misconception, but things have got an immense amount more um, uh, uh, power efficient. Some of the AMD graphics cards are still kind of lagging a lot uh, behind a little bit. But as you can see, even with the flagship's uh, single core NVIDIA one being run here, 450 watts, you know, was enough. Uh, a 2011 rig we tested, which is uh, overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz, 3960X, with an AMD 280X, that was 434 watts pulled from the wall, so roughly the same as this rig, kind of, you know, mixing a slightly lower graphics card with a slightly higher CPU. 650 Ti rig was under 300 watts, um, and if you go down to a HD 5550, which is a tiny little half height, um, and that's still in a 2011 rig, that was only pulling 212 watts. And that's maximum, you know, across all of them. So if you're considering buying a power supply, there's a couple of things that you need to kind of think about. Um, a, I will always tell you to try and buy a good quality branded unit. Whether you're buying a Corsair unit or you're gonna go and buy one of the other brands, a power supply you shouldn't skimp on. And I've, that's a, a mantra that I've had ever since I first started building PCs. And that's because I've seen um, uh, on forums and friends have had quite a few horror stories where their power supply, they've skimped on it a bit, it's gone pop. And because it's, you know, they've skimped and it's not got the safety features and stuff inside it, when the power supply goes pop, it has got the ability to kill anything that's attached on the end of it, which is essentially your rig. Um, memory and hard drives seem to be commonplace when a power supply goes pop they seem to die but it can take out um, you know your motherboard and your CPU as well and you know I have had power supplies in the past personally I'm not going to mention the brand but it's one of the reasons why I don't use them that the power supply has gone pop and it's taken an entire system with it so never skimp on your power supply so we can kind of say that the majority of gaming rigs out there, um, if I was going to put, uh, if I was going to buy a power supply to put in this, I would probably go with something along the lines of the RM550 or 650, depending on the budget, because with this rig, it gives you a little bit of headroom. And why do you want headroom? Maybe, maybe you don't want your power supply running at what was effectively at 95%, like we had here today. But it also means with your fan profiles and stuff like that, especially if you've got semi-passive fan profiles, I mean, these are awesome. And you can see we're running this on a bloody ragged edge, but it was still quiet. But with some of the other brands, if you've got a semi-passive fan profile, it may mean that it stays quieter for longer. Um, but like I said, this say, you know, for a single cord graphics card system like this, a good quality 650 watt would be ample, Re really would be ample. If you wanted to chuck another graphics card in, maybe 850 watts um there are you know like up to the thousand watts and stuff like that and really nowadays because most of the power supplies are quite good if you go up to that kind of thousand watt mark it just means it's going to end up where it should end up being quieter as long as the fans aren't just kind of like on or off um but the purpose of this video today was for me to build like i said was a relatively high-end rig and show you that you don't necessarily need a huge amount of power to run it um, so with all this 430 watt and we had it running perfectly fine from a quality 450 watt power supply so next time uh, your mate turns around to you and says that your SLI 280X is needs a 1200 watt power supply or they won't start you can confidently turn around and tell him that unless that power supply is utter garbage you could quite easily get away with something as small as a 750 or an 850 and still have quite a bit of headroom there. Now obviously I'm generalizing. There's gonna be the trolls out there that are gonna start throwing stuff at me about old four GTX 480s and stuff like that. I just wanna be clear, I am talking about if you're gonna be building a rig with new components now. If you're going to be uh, upgrading in the near future and you wanna ask, then just pop onto the OC3D forums. You can uh, post underneath. We've got a power supply section. And all you need to do is come to us and say, I'm a bit stuck. I don't know what power supply that I need to buy. 
you obviously are going to need to put all of your rig specs, so all of your hardware, CPU, motherboard, RAM, graphics card, hard drives, fans don't really matter so much, but putting up as much info in there as possible and tell us what your budget is, because the budget is the most crucial thing. If you've got four 780 ties, but you've only got 50 quid to spend on a power supply, it might lead us scratching our heads a little bit, but you get my point. Um, but hopefully, those of you out there will find this uh, a good tool, and it may make you think, you know, and let's face it, Corsair ain't going to be very happy with me telling you that you only really need to buy a 450 watt or a 550 watt power supply, when there's loads of you out there that are spending probably let's put it into context, maybe 80 or or $100 more than you need to on a power supply and massively, massively overdoing it. Uh, but those of you out there that have done it, like I said, you have got a bit of headroom. It's not going to be running on the ragged edge and it's probably going to be running a bit quieter. Um, but anyway, I hope you will find this uh, little video, because it is going to be little for me, um, helpful and maybe help you make some slightly different choices in the not too distant future. The one thing I would like you to take away from this is A, if you buy quality and you do need to pay for the quality, you can't go and buy some unranded piece of crap in a grey box and expect it to run your 780 tie. But maybe try and spend a little bit more on your power supply than you would have thought about before. Because if you've got, say for argument's sake, you know, you, you, you only need a 450 watt power supply, maybe you can put it up and get like the platinum or something. It's just the more kind of features and stuff that you add to them, the better. You don't necessarily need to have more watts, the more safety precautions, the link, and all those type of things, I personally think that they're invaluable. But anyway, for now at least, trying to get off the camera because I can see the numbers going round and round and round and round and the seconds going up and up and up. This is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you, out.